So you guys actually never cease to amaze me. So I was checking my channel analytics a couple days ago, and for any of you guys that follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you know I was probably talking about this. Over the last year, 2016, I had over 995,000 minutes watched. And now looking at it right now, lifetime, 1,081,773. That is absolutely freaking insane. If you do the math, that comes out to over about a little over two years of watch time. That's so freaking crazy. You guys are so freaking awesome. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the constant gaining subscribers, videos. It just keeps going up and up and up. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I, you guys are my, you know, like all my little babies. I love all you dearly. So uh, thank you guys again for all the ongoing support. And we're going to get on with this video. So today is questions and answers. And I want to go over the questions from my last video. I want to talk about everything in depth as much as I can. So yeah, let's get into it. So because of the fact that I actually have the memory of Dory from Finding Nemo, and I just looked down and made sure my phone didn't lock, I have my phone up to make sure that I look at all the questions because I have a very good tendency to forget things so that I get in too much of a rush and to get too ahead of myself. I want to make sure I get everything on the head. So without further ado, let's go. So the first question that I see comes from Nick Bennett. Question for your next Q&A. Can you explain the process of what will happen after you get off the plane when you arrive at Lackland? Yes, I talked about it in my one of my videos, my zero night experience, but I'll talk about it again. So, the minute I got off the plane, the first thing I went to do, I went to go to the bathroom. Then after that, we go downstairs, because there's no one be waiting for you, unless they do that now, I don't know. And there was a booth, it said Air Force on it, whatever, and being the idiot that I am, I can't believe I have to explain this again. <laughs> um, I said, ma'am, is this where we come to check in? She's just like, shut up, no talking, I'm like, oh god, here we go. And she's just like, alright, sign, because she had her campaign hat on, that's why, or on the desk, I'm like, I should have seen this coming. She's like, just sign your name, call your parents, or give them a text, let them know you are made it safely, then shut your phone off and go sit down. So you go and sit down, and you just wait there until the bus arrives, then they're going to put you all at attention, and they'll in the airport in rows, or elements, I'm sorry, and people are going to be walking by and staring and pointing at you, just, just ignore it. They're going to put you on the plane, they're going to tell you to either shut up or talk, depending on your bus driver, I've heard different kind of stories. They'll either let you talk, or they'll just make you be quiet. One or the other. Then you'll show up at basic, and then that's when you get greeted by the... Whoever it is that greets some of uh, the new trainees at that week, I guess, whoever does receiving that week, they'll say you have 30 seconds to get off this bus, and you haul it, they'll put guard over here, reserve over here, reactive over here, you're going to march in, go sign some paperwork, sit in the auditorium for a couple hours. Actually, I'm sorry, no, first you'll go, in, go into this room, get issued all this basic stuff, but seeing as how they have backpacks now, from what I now understand, they probably should have all that stuff in there. So, um, I'm going to assume that one of they used to put us in this room and make you hold all the stuff up. I'm going to assume now they give you a backpack, you go through it, you hold all the stuff up, and then go sit in the auditorium. I'm assuming, I'm guessing, it makes sense to me. I'm just supplementing what happened to me with the backpack. I truly don't know. And then you go meet your TIs. They march you on up your squadron, run you, bus you, whatever, depending on how far you are away. And yeah, that's what's going to happen to you, generally speaking. It's pretty nerve-wracking. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be tired. You're not going to know what the hell's going on. It's just a, it's a, it's a good time. It's like Disneyland. A next question, can females bring razors to basic? I know it sounds dumb, I just want to make sure, thank you. And this comes from Allison Rose. That is not a dumb question. And if I'm being completely honest, I truly don't know. But I would definitely like to think that they would definitely support you doing that. I definitely don't see why not. Um, because, you know, it's a, it's a health thing, you know, you don't want to get sick. Um, so yeah, I definitely don't see a reason why not. And if anything, talk to your recruiter or whatever the day before you ship out. And if you bring it and they're not supposed to have it, they'll just take it for you anyway. Sure, you might get yelled at, but who really cares? If it concerns you or you feel like you need it, bring it anyways, if it's, you know, acceptable to bring. Something like that, I would just bring it anyways. My next question comes from Eric Palin. Is it true that it is more difficult to enter the Air Force than it is the Army or the Navy, and that the Air Force recruiters don't have as much time to help you because of the number of people trying to get in versus the amount of recruiters? Do you have to wait some time before going to be empty? So learn my words. Okay, so I'm going to answer this question piece by piece. So, first of all, technically, yes, the Air Force does have more standards, like higher standards of health and intelligence, like, I mean, what I mean intelligence, I mean ASVAB scores, in comparison to the branches. So, yes, technically they do. It's not me saying the Air Force is better, that is just a fact. The Air Force recruiters don't have as much time to help you because the number of people are trying to get in versus the amount of recruiters. That is entirely dependent on your area. My recruiters were at my recruiter, and I say recruiters because I had to go through a couple, like, one got out, no one was here, then he got moved. It was it was a show, I'll say that much. But any in any case, 
Um, my recruiter was very helpful, always in contact with me, and there was a lot of people in my debt program. There was only like three of them, like 40 or 50 of us, and they were very attentive. They did as much as they could. So it all depends on your area and if they're just good at what they do or if they just care. I would definitely say it's really dependent on them for your initial experience, but don't don't let rumors dry you out. I had very good recruiters, and I know other people have as well. So yeah, it's really dependent on the area and if whether or not they just care. Did you have to wait some time before going to BNT? Oh my god, yeah, I waited almost a year. So I waited six months just to get my job, and then I waited three months to leave for basic. Now some people, they leave the next week. It really depends on if you want to wait for a job or you want to just go open general and just leave. Depends on you. If you want to wait for a job, actually wait for it. But try not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a little game you gotta play, you know? I think if you're in the debt for a year, then we can go back to MEPS to make sure nothing's exchange with you. But in any case, I would always wait to get a good job that you know you want instead of going in open general. Because, you know, I like to, I got a guaranteed job, and I'm glad I did. And I would like to think all of you would like to as well, unless you just truly don't care and just want to leave. And in any case, that's your best option. The next question comes from Thundercrow J. Question for your next Q&A. Why can't enlisted members of the Air Force be affiliated with commissioned officers? Also, before enlisting or commissioning into the United States Air Force, what activities do you prefer to take part in middle or high school? Okay, so the first part of the question, why can't enlisting happen with officers? It's a matter of favoritism and power. Officers hold authority and power over the enlisted. That's just a matter of fact. And we have the saying in the Air Force, perception is reality. If it looks like you're getting a little cheeky with you know, the commander or the DO or your lieutenant or whatever, they're going to assume it's the worst and you're just trying to play the game. That's why you can't really hang out with them. You're not supposed to. It's, you know, it's the matter of they hold authority over you, and that is why you're not allowed to. Now, can you be friends with them during work? Yeah, I'm not saying you just have to, like, not talk to them if it's just not business at all. But in any case, you just can't, you know, be too buddy-buddy because then it just looks a little fishy. You know what I'm saying? They hold some level of authority over you to where any matter of being too cheeky with each other can come across as someone trying to just play the game and get a little farther ahead than everybody else. That's all it's about. The next question, also a foreign listing or commissioning into the United States Air Force, I'm enlisted by the way. What activity did you part take part in in middle and high school? So I ran track and cross country. I also did bowling. I don't know if a lot of you guys at schools offers bowling, but I was a big bowler. So I did a lot of that. And yeah, that's basically it. I did coach football, uh, little league football. So that was kind of fun. I did that for a couple of years. And I don't really think I did anything else. It's kind of hard to remember all those years. It's kind of a blur to me. I don't really have that good of a memory. I really am like Dory. Oh my god. But yeah, I was a, wasn't was really too big a sports guy. I always did YouTube videos though. Like you said, if my old video game playlist, that's years. That's doing that way longer than I've been doing this. I promise you. Did that for a long time. And yeah, I kind of just hung around. Game, work, whatever. You know, fun times. Alright, so this is kind of a long question. But it comes from Nicholas Lee. So also questions for a Q&A. Regarding soap and shampoo, if I just bring a two-in-one, will that be okay in your security drawer? Should I have body wash and shampoo separate for inspections? And then have a two-in-one in a tub and only use a two-in-one? My advice is just a two-in-one. It's less to inspect. The less to inspect, the better off you are. Trust me on that. Also, I know your MTI makes or breaks your BMT experience, but if you had to say average of how the inspector security drawer on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being they check every single follow up on a toothbrush, what would you say? So I would say that definitely depends on your MTI, but I they are very attentive to detail because that's what the Air Force mostly stresses is attention to detail. That's what the Air Force stresses the most is attention to detail. They know you're not going to be perfect because people are better than others. I wasn't really that good at it, if I'm being honest. I kind of have a tendency to overlook things sometimes and not see it until it's too late, unfortunately. But, no, the thing is, BMT, make or break your experience. BMT is eight weeks of your life. As long as something really super shady isn't happening to you, it should be okay. It's only eight weeks. It's no big deal. You know You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't... Your BMT, your BMT experience doesn't need to be amazing, but if it sucks, it sucks. It's basic. It's not supposed to be amazing. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's my thing with it. It's just, if they're great, they're great. If they're not, oh well. You know, it's eight weeks of your life. And I know at the time that seems like a lot, but it flies by, I promise you. And then when you get out of it, you're like, well, that flew by. Wouldn't want to go back to that, right? This question comes from DC389. Do you know any ATC guys, air traffic control? I got air traffic control, but it's a mandatory six years, and I'm worried about washing out and becoming security forces for six years. So, unfortunately, no, I do not know any air traffic control people. But, at the same time, just because you watch it doesn't mean you'll be automatically put into security forces. This is the reason I chose this question. You are actually, you can choose, um, your, well actually, let me rephrase that. It's a matter of why you fail. If you just couldn't keep up with it in any kind of way, like education-wise, I think they try to help you get into a different kind of job field, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, my, my advice, I mean, obviously just don't fail, but I mean, people fail, that's why it happens. You won't automatically be put back into security forces, 
but except the fact that it can happen. You know, realistically, there's not a lot I can say about this. Um, if anyone is air traffic control that is watching this, put some advice to this person in my BMT packing list video. But other than that, I can't really say I can help you that much, man. But as long as you pay attention and try your hardest, I think you'll be all right, I promise. It's a very stressful job. My job was mandatory six sign on too, so I understand what you mean. Um, I was in training for eight months. I'm not air traffic control, but yeah, I know what you mean. Mentor is six years, though guess what, though, means you'll be putting on E3, so that's good, right? Question from Shadow in the Night. Do you have the obstacle course at BMT, and if so, did you have fun, and which was your favorite part of it? So, unfortunately, uh, we had the claw. We didn't do, like, the traditional obstacle course they used to do back in the day, but we did the claw, and I can't remember every detail about it, so if I can find a video, I'll put it in the description, you can watch that. My favorite part of it had to be, uh, you had to get up on the rope and, like, get on with your arms and your legs and just, like, crawl your way like you know just crawl your way back i was actually able to do it in one go it was pretty sweet i felt pretty awesome about it no i'm just, I'm just kidding but it was really fun um it's not really that challenging but it is it is a good time because in basic you're stiff as a board and marching everywhere this is kind of a good time to get out let loose show off your athletic ability you know move it's a good feeling so i would definitely uh i would definitely do that and the funny thing is is uh, i remember i remember we were doing this and somehow i lost my my uh my beanie, I, th I forget, the watch cap, that's what it is. And somehow it fell off my head, or I think I brought the wrong one. So everyone was uniform but me, so I'm kind of just standing there like, please don't see me, please don't see me, please don't see me. And then I get called out, Martin, damn it. Yeah, they just made me go back, and when we go back to the tents and change back and just ABUs to just go and uh, do that. So that was a good time. Question comes from Chalupa J. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Hey Martin, can you talk about what jobs are most marketable on the civilian side? I leave February 28th is Cyber Transport Systems. So I'll tell you that much, that job will definitely be uh, marketable on the civilian side because cyber is a big thing now, just like a lot of computer stuff is. It's one main reason why I joined the Air Force is because I would say or argue, not even though I don't know much, of course, like I always say, that the Air Force has the most marketable jobs outside of the military because we kind of run ourselves more like, not more like, but more of a business type as opposed to a military in some cases, not all cases, of course. In some cases, not all cases, of course. But in any case, I would definitely say a lot of jobs are like, maybe not admin per se, because that's a job anyone can do, but you know, experience is experience. And having military experience will definitely put you on the curb of anyone else. So cyber stuff, definitely. Um, so you mean security forces, I mean, you're a military cop. That puts you ahead of the curb of anyone just trying to go into the, the academy for being a cop, you know what I'm saying? So. A lot of jobs are, especially having decent military experience. So, if anything, make sure you get that honorable discharge when you get out, more than anything else. Because there's a lot of jobs in the military, especially in the Air Force. I can't talk about all of them. I have one job. That's all I got. But I can definitely tell you that if you do well, you'll find a job. So these next questions are not for the Q&A, but I feel like they're important to put on in the video. That's why I'm gonna. That's why I'm gonna bring them up now. So on my "What is life like in the Air Force?" video, this question came interest me. Quick question for training for BMT PT. Should I focus more on running for the 1.5 mile, making my time for making time, or run for a longer time and more distance? Good question. Do not run distances. You will not help yourself at all. You'll be preparing yourself for a longer run. That's not going to help you. Speed training. Speed training will help you so much for your one mile and a half. Because a mile and a half, it's a distance event, but it's not really a long. It's not that long, you know what I'm saying? So I would, my advice to you um, would be every single every single week, run a mile and a half like a PT test. And then during the, in the end part of the week, just do some PT, like speed training, like just sprints, you know, different workouts, like, you know, sprint the straightaway, shot the corners, just some stupid example like that, you know what I'm saying? So that's a good thing to do, speed training. Do not do distance training. You'll get better stamina, sure, but you're not gonna help your speed do it faster. That's my point. That question also came from Nick Alice, by the way. I always have to credit people who ask these questions. Um, this guy, this question comes from the guy. Hey man, good video. I'm considering listing at 30. Is that going to be weird? Also, I have an associate's degree, so would I be coming in as an E3? So, good questions, both of them. So, I would love to think that yes, you would definitely be an E3, but I can't look up for sure. But I know you only need so much level of education to come in like that. Having a degree, I would definitely say coming as an E3. If I can find out for sure, I'll put the links in the description. And joining at 30? No, not weird at all. Um, I know someone who graduated basic at 39 years old, and he was not the only one. Trust me, it's not weird. You may get made dorm chief because they usually look towards the other older people for that, but in any case, no, it's it's not weird. This question comes from Shadow in the Night. Again, this guy, man, 
Good questions. Did you ever use the bugle sticks in BMT? And if so, did you like it? I absolutely freaking loved it. Now, even so, they try to say, don't aim for the head. Me and my buddy, um, I, I, I'm sorry, man. I forget your name in my basic flight, but we actually had a good fight. Like, we weren't just trying, like, just getting up close and just pounding each other. We actually were trying to do it, like, realistically as much as we could. We were, like, dodging, juking, moving back, like, striking in, pulling back out. Actually trying to have like a real fight instead of trying to get up close to each other and just trying to whack each other in the face as hard as we could. We were actually trying to dodge and actually have a realistic fight as much as we could. It was definitely, it was a riot. I absolutely loved it. So as long as you get someone who's not a complete oblivious idiot whose only goal in life is to smack you in the head, it should be fun. So this question comes from my name is Jerry. Just found your channel yesterday and subbed to you. I was just wanting to know if you had any tips on taking the ASVAB and is it very challenging. I'm 19 years old and I regret not taking the ASVAB in high school because I hadn't made up my mind about going to the Air Force, but now I'm sure I really want to go. I graduated with a 4.0 GPA, so I'm confident I'll do good, but I'm nervous I won't make a really high score to have a wide range of jobs to select from. I really want to do something that I'll enjoy for years to come. Thanks, Emory Martin. So, Jerry, um, the thing about it mostly is, is just that you don't, you have to remember that just because you don't score, so you, you may score 100 on the ASVAB, but have things that just medically disqualify you and you'll still have a very slim list of jobs. And vice versa, so my advice to you as long as you know you're physically healthy and you score like a 70 to an 80, if not like a 50 to a 60, you'll have a very wide range of jobs. Maybe you won't get that one special thing you like, but you'll still have a lot of different things, like things you might not even know you liked. If I'm honest, I did not pick my job. Like, what, I'm, what I mean by that is just that it, well, I didn't go in thinking I was going to be what I am now. I wanted to be... Uh, I want to be cyber security, and I mean that security. That's what it's listed as, not security, security. That's what I wanted. I'm not it, but I like what I do a lot more. So that's the thing: is be a little bit open-minded. You might not know what you like until you get it. I'm not saying going blind, but just because you don't get 100 on the ASVAB doesn't mean you're not going to have a lot of list of options. You can have quite a few, scoring average, if not a little bit higher. So if so long, especially if you have a 4.0 GPA, man, you should be, you should be fine. Um, I, what I would recommend though for taking the ASVAB. Go online, take a lot of practice tests, and then study some old old high school material. But we'll mostly took it the practice test online, and then look at the general areas the ASVAB covers, and then just study up on generally each aspect of it, and you should be fine. Question comes from Alex Castaneda. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name, guys. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm 18, wanted to join the Air Force. Did slash do you deal with being away from me? From for me, it's going to be my first time ever as a male. I have fears, and then I asked him like what he meant. And he said to be away from my family. So, yeah, it can it can definitely be difficult for me. Um, it was my first time away from my family too. So think about it, you're gonna be away from them, but at the same time, going with a positive mind that like, this is my first time being an adult, and you know, you know, my first time away. Sure, it's a little scary, but at the same time, you're finally free to do what you want to do within reason, of course. So going with that positive mind, like yeah, you're away. But now I can finally make something of myself and be my own person. I'm not saying don't miss your family, but don't be negative about it. I'm not saying you are. Don't go in only negative about it. Go in with a positive mind like, yeah, I'm finally going to be an adult, take care of myself, serve my country. It's awesome. It's great. Think positively about it, and it won't be nearly as bad as you think. And that is the video for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If I keep getting more and more comments routinely, maybe I'll do like a weekly Q&A or like every two weeks or something like that, the more and more questions that I get. It's awesome that I keep watching my subscribers, my views, everything, watch time even, for a million minutes, man, it's freaking crazy, just skyrocket more and more. You guys are my absolute favorite. I love coming home and reading the comments on my videos. I get so many more notifications now. It's amazing. You guys never cease to amaze me, and that is why I do what I do for you guys. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you all next week. See ya.